Well, hi there. This is Lesson 7, Saxon Course 2. And what we're going to talk about today has to do with lines, angles, and planes. Lines, angles, and planes. Okay, not the airplane like you fly through the air. Okay. Now, there is a little vocabulary that goes along with it, so maybe we should write that down. Okay, we have space, the final frontier. Okay, space is just our world of three dimensions. Okay. The second thing is, of course, the plane, which does not have wings. And the plane is a two-dimensional. Flat world. Flat. And that, that's intended to be that way. Flat world. Uh, it has a length and a width okay but it has no depth so that antenna is flat a line okay a line has only one dimension okay and it has length but it has no width and no depth. So hence it is got only one dimension. Okay, now in the world of lines, angles, and planes, we have to realize that it is the study of geometry that goes along with this. And the study of geometry does study all figures. In all dimensions. And that's not just one dimension. It's two dimension and three dimension. I believe that there's more and more and more and more and more dimensions than that. Uh, another dimensionless type thing is a point. A point believe it or not, has no dimensions. And there's an absolute unlimited amount of them. Okay? Uh, a point has some important facts about it. It is an exact location in space. which is really unmeasurably small. So very, 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 very tiny. It is usually represented with a dot. Okay. And it is named with uppercase letters. That means capital. For example, a point, there's a point, and that would be point A. Okay? So, geometry is a study of all figures in all dimensions. A point is a dimensionless figure. Okay? It's an exact location in space. It's represented with a dot and a capital letter. And there's a point. Okay. Now, we have points, and then, of course, along with points, we have things called lines. And we talked about lines up above, but we're going to actually talk a little more about it right here. Okay, a line, it contains an infinite 
number of points. Going in both directions. It has, of course, as we said above, it has one dimension. It has no thickness. And we represent a line by drawing it. And typically we draw it, and I, I won't use a straight edge, but typically we draw it like this. We put an arrow at both ends. Okay, like that. Now, lines, remember, have infinite number of points. So there's bazillions and bazillions and bazillions of points on this line. We cannot see them all. But there are. There's just bazillions of them. Unlimited amount of points on this line. And this line goes on forever in both directions. Now if we wanted to name this line, we have to put points on it that we can name it by. So I'm going to put two points on it. This is point A. That's point B. Now we can identify that line. We identify it by its points. So if this is line AB, we would write it like this. We put a little line like that and we'd write AB. We can also write it BA. It makes no difference which direction it goes because it's a line. Okay, the next thing we need to talk about are rays. Okay, rays is part of a line with one endpoint. Okay, we represent a ray like this. Okay, generally this would be A and then we'd have another point on here and that would be B. If we were going to write it, we would write if you want this, if you want to represent this ray, okay, you're going to write it like this with a little tiny ray symbol above it and you would write AB meaning that the ray starts at A and travels to the right. Now it is possible, folks, to have a ray that goes this direction. There's nothing that says that the ray has to go to the right. It can go to the left. And let's say this is um, R and S. So in this case, this ray, put a little symbol above it, and this is ray R, S. Okay, the symbol is usually drawn like that, okay, but the, the ray has to be given in the order that it starts. So the first letter has to be the where the, the ray ends, and the second letter has to be where it goes on. Okay, the next thing we need to talk a little bit about is a segment. Okay, a line segment has two endpoints, and it does not go on forever in either direction. It ends. So this, that is a line segment. It has no arrows and it does not go on forever and ever. And if you were to write it correctly, you would write it like that or, and this, it doesn't make a difference, the order, it could be FE. As long as you put the mark above it. One thing about a segment, it has a specific length. Okay, because it has to end. Okay, it has to end. Now, when you're looking at segments, you will see segments be, can be a part of a, a larger line. And so you can see something like this. You might have a line that looks like this and you have these segments. Let's say this is A, B, and C. If you want to know the length of segment AC, then you would have to add AB and BC together to get the length of AC. So the length of AC is equal to the length of AB plus the length of BC. Now, I know that makes sense to you. It's not really all that hard, okay? If I were to tell you that BC was 7 and AB was 13, then you would be able to tell me that the length of segment AC 
was 20. See how that works? It's really kind of an easy thing to do. And sometimes you have they'll give you the whole length and you have to subtract. All right, so getting past segments, let's talk just a little bit about angles. And angles aren't all that hard. There's a few things about angles that we need to know, okay? We talked about a plane earlier. And we said a plane was a flat surface that extends without end. So it goes on forever and ever. If you were to hold up a piece of paper and you imagine that it kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going and kept going forever and ever and ever, that would be a plane. It has length and width but no depth. But it's flat. Okay. Now, another word that goes along with that is intersect. Now, we most often see intersect when it comes to lines, lines that cross each other, okay? So intersect is lines that cross, whoops, C-R-O-S-S, -S, each other. Okay, now planes can cross each other, but when they do cross each other, they will intersect in a line. So, I'm going to just draw two lines right here. Okay, these two lines are intersecting. Okay, this is line AC, and this is line DB. Okay, and they're intersecting right here, and this is at point M. That's the intersection. So, line. DB intersects line AC at point M. Okay, so at point M. All right, so they do intersect. I don't know what the angles are that they intersect at. It doesn't really make any difference at this point. We just need to realize that they do intersect. Another geometry type thing that we need to worry about when it comes to line are parallel lines. Okay, now parallel lines never, 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 never intersect. Okay, they can go on forever and ever and they will never, ever intersect. Now these are probably not perfectly drawn so if you did draw those out they probably would intersect. But in a perfect world if you draw two lines and you draw them parallelly la, 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 they will never ever intersect. And one way you can always know they're parallel is if someone draws a straight line down through here like this. If this angle and that angle are both right angles then you know absolutely that they are parallel lines. Okay, now the the um, way you write so, you, so somebody can tell that they're parallel in symbols looks like this line PR parallel. See that? See that right there? See that symbol? Line PR is parallel to line ST. That right there is the parallel symbol. You need to use that when you're writing lines that are parallel. Now, I just kind of pointed that out just a second ago about perpendicular, actually, and that's the next thing. Perpendicular lines. Perpendicular lines are simply lines that intersect at a 90 degree angle. Okay, and they're going to look like this. They look like a cross, okay, like that. And even if they aren't drawn absolutely perfectly like mine are not drawn, if you, if one angle is marked 90 degrees or marked parallel, okay, then the whole thing is 
perpendicular. They're all. Then they all are 90 degrees. Okay? So that's how you would know. If I marked this as, this is F, G, and this is E, and this is D, okay? You would write it as D, E, line D, E, sorry, perpendicular. Here's the symbol for perpendicular to line F, G. You got to keep track of those symbols because those are important. Okay? Now, a couple more things and I'll try to let you go. This has kind of gotten along on me, but that's just the way it is. There are lines such as they're called oblique. Okay? Oblique lines are lines in a plane that are neither okay I need an I in there they're neither parallel or or nor perpendicular actually we see a lot of these okay you'll see a lot of them in your book these two lines not parallel and they certainly aren't perpendicular so you would just say, if this was line A, B, whoops, A, B, and this is line C, D, you would say line A, B, and line C, D are oblique. Okay? Now we'll talk a little bit about angles. An angle, I always write it that way to remind myself, is formed by two rays. An angle is formed by two rays. Okay? Where the rays intersect, is called the vertex. So, you have a ray here, and you have another ray here. This right here, that is the vertex. Okay? Now, this is ray, let's say we name this vertex N, and this is O, and this is P. This is angle O, N, P. Wherever the vertex is, that has to be the center of the name of your angle. You could also have angle P, N, O, still having that vertex in the middle. It can be named either way. Okay? And quite often when they're having you name angles, you'll end up naming them two different ways. Okay, quickly there's one other thing that I want to uh, give you for your notes. And that has to do with types of angles, and I'm sure you know about these, but I'm going to quickly write about them anyway. Types of angles. Okay, we have the right angle. And it is always 90 degrees. We have an acute angle. And it is always less than 90 degrees. So it's a really cute little angle. We have the obtuse angle. And it is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180. Okay? We have a straight angle. Got those kind of close. A straight angle is a straight line. It looks like a straight line, actually. Um, looks like a straight line. And it is 180 degrees. Okay? So a straight angle looks like, looks like a straight line. 
and it's 180 degrees. And the last one that your textbook doesn't really cover is called the reflux angle. And the reflux angle is actually larger than 180 degrees. And it can go to, I guess, larger than 180. And it it's, can be a lot bigger. It can go, probably goes up to 360. Most of them don't go that large, but generally that's what they go to. Okay, well, I'm sorry this has been kind of long, but um, there were a lot of notes in this particular lesson. So, I hope you enjoyed it. Talk to you later.